The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and affections of sinful men, grant unto thy people that they may love that thing which thou commandest, and desire that which thou dost promise, that so among the sundry and manifold changes of the world our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joy is to be found, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is from the 17th verse of the first chapter of the general epistle of St. James. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the grafted, ingrafted word which is able to save your soul. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ from the 16th chapter of St. John, beginning with the fifth verse. Jesus said unto his disciples, Now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, Whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment, of sin. Because they believe not on me, of righteousness, because I go to my Father. And ye see me no more, of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. The Gospel of our Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his 
his father before all worlds. The heart of God, light of light, very God and very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord will give of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and Apostolic Church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today's collect is a petition to Almighty God, who alone can order the wills and affections of sinful men. It might be worth spending a couple of minutes today considering how God goes about doing this. God does not scream orders like an agitated parent or zap us with lightning bolts every time we stray from the straight and narrow. The fact that he does not do this leads many people to conclude through the notion that he orders our wills and affections is just so much hot air. Either God does not exist, or he does not care. People do not respond very well to bullying, shouting, zapping, simply makes us dig our heels in. God knows this as well as we do. After all, he made us. To see the way he works, we need to study the history of the children of Israel. They, after all, were his first pupils. And we could do an awful lot worse than consider the implications of the place he had picked out for them to live. The Holy Land is a rather peculiar place for God who was selected as a homeland for his chosen people. For starters, it's not particularly fertile. In fact, growing things there is decidedly difficult. Much of it is what the Bible describes as wilderness. Sure, there are areas where you can literally throw seeds on the ground and they'll shoot up. But most of it is quite arid. Either you must irrigate the land to make it produce, or you must rely on relatively unpredictable rainfall. Nor is there much in the way of natural resources. There's no big trees like the cedars of Lebanon. And the ore and chemical deposits are off the beaten track. In the inhospitable places like the Sinai, the Negev, and the Dead Sea, where oily bitumen floats on the surface of permanent reminder of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. What is more, it's a difficult country to defend. Its wadis and canyons, craggy hills, and mountains make it ideal for guerrilla warfare. But guerrillas cannot defend a nation state. And besides, the natural obstacles do not offset the disadvantages of wide valleys and plains that favor large and well disciplined standing armies. The children of Israel were formidable fighters, but even at the zenith of Israel's uh, power, there was not enough of them to fend off the powerful nations that surrounded them. As if these disadvantages were not bad enough, the Holy Land stood at the hub of the ancient world. Anybody who wanted to go any place by foot had no alternative but to use it as a highway. The Egyptians marched across it to attack Lebanon. Hittites, Assyrians, and Babylonians marched across it to attack Egypt. Alexander the Great, well, he marched across it to attack absolutely anybody he could find. Why on earth did God put his cho chosen people in a place like this where he could have put them in a far more attractive place? The answer is, God was trying to teach them, and us, something that cannot be taught in a comfortable backwater where food falls off the trees. 
It is that the God is always in complete charge. That even the most powerful human beings are subject to his laws and utterly powerless before him. Also, God will protect, defend, and nurture those who put their trust in God. It's not an unduly complicated lesson, but to make it quite clear, God had to plant his chosen people in the most vulnerable spot conceivable. It was, for example, solely thanks to God's intervention that the Israelites were able to set the land of Canaan. From a human perspective, it was a hopeless quest. The people who conquered the land of Canaan under Joshua, they were a mob of runaway slaves. The Canaanite military was far better armed and equipped, yet was utterly vanquished by the Israeli rabble. It was an event unique in military history, a miracle, pure and simple. One might imagine that after such a demonstration of God's power, that the children of Israel would have learned, once and for all time, to put their trust in God. And it's quite clear that the men and women who, under Joshua, had conquered Canaan were acutely conscious of God's hand in their victory. But it's equally clear this humble sense of awareness lasted only a couple of generations. Read the book of Judges and you'll see God's role had entirely been forgotten. The people turned to worshiping the Canaanite gods. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Slowly but surely, they lost everything their ancestors had won at God's command. When we study the book of Judges, we can analyze in minute detail the process that follows when God-fearing people abandon their faith. First, we notice a breakdown in social and sexual morality. Then, we see the crime rate start to rise, slowly at the beginning, then exponentially. And finally, society disintegrates altogether. In fact, it's one of the predominant themes of the Old Testament echoing and re-echoing throughout the books. The message is that we exist not thanks to our own abilities and resources, but thanks to God's grace alone. One of the many things the Bible makes clear is that mastering this lesson is an absolute essential. God would much prefer us to learn it the easy way, by studying the history of the children of Israel, with the idea of grasping the theory and avoiding their errors. Failing that, we can learn things the hard way, by bitter personal experience. But one way or the other, learn it we will. History shows that it is a lesson that has been learned, unlearned, and learned again at the cost of untold human suffering throughout the history of our own Western culture. At a glance at the news, it suffices to show that our generation is not very much more inclined to learn than the children of Israel were in the day of Judges. It would be really depressing if it's not for another lesson that God is equally determined to teach us. It is another of those lessons that he had to teach us time and time again. God is always willing to forgive us our sins and to make things right again. It is a lesson we seem no more inclined to learn than the children of Israel. Read the Psalms, and one sees that in time of catastrophe, even the most pious people give way to despair, believing that God has abandoned them. But what the Bible shows is that no matter how foolish we are or what evil things we do, God will never abandon his people. In fact, when we think he has abandoned us, it is usually the case that we have abandoned him. 
We turn our backs on God all the time, especially when we try to be the good guys. We consistently try to do His thinking for Him, imagining that our finite minds can come up with a better plan of action than God's infinite mind. We try to rely on our own limited resources rather than on His infinite supply. It seems hardly fair to do things our way, by subtle intrigue, slippery diplomacy, and dishonest politics. We then blame God for banning us when things go wrong. But that is exactly what the children of Israel did, and so do we. The good news is that God is always ready to forgive us our mistakes and to set things right. And that is why he sent his only son, Jesus Christ. And this, the most important lesson of all, is so eloquently summed up by St. John. So God loved the world, and he gave his only begotten son, to the end that all who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The holy sacrifice is offered to the praise and glory of God, and with in thanksgiving for the glorious resurrection of uh, our, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's Church militant here on earth. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our, our, our oblations, and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they who confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, and especially Donald, our president, and Lawrence, our governor, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. With grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servant John, our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, 
to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those who we mention in the secrecy of our hearts. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants who parted this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O God, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all this past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in units of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins unto all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the very paschal lamb which was offered for us, and hath taken away the sins of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death, and by his rising to life again hath restored to us everlasting life. Therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory, Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, O Zadok, in the highest. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. 
For thou art the same, Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And in institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. With the same night that he was betrayed, bread, when he had given thanks, he prayed gave to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world, happy are they who are called his supper. With the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, bless you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. As I say, we Christ have taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy of our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, Almighty Father, world without end. Amen. Let us join in singing the Gloria in its chelsis. Glory be to God of might, and on earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, support us all the day long, until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, and the busy world is hushed, and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in thy mercy grant us a safe lodging, and a holy rest, and peace at the last. Amen. Amen. 